Hello Creator! Welcome to Odessa Rose Crates. I'm Robin Schmidt and I'm an independent chalk couture designer, which means I'm going to share with you my love of silkscreen printing with chalk couture's reusable silkscreen transfers, chalkology paste, and much more. So today we are going to work on a surface of theirs called the Diagonal Reclaimed Diagonal Palette Board. And we're going to work on that today with a transfer called the General Store. Uh, yesterday's live, we created on this painted globe with one transfer. Let your dreams be your wings. And then we embellished it. And it came with all these little feather transfers. And we put the feathers on there. Um, the globe I got at a hobby store and it was discounted it looked like this and I had painted it black and then we used our um, silkscreen transfer on it with chalk paste and then of course I embellished it with uh, the ribbons and the paper flowers and some metal um, wings and a little arrow on beads so that was yesterday's live so if you missed that Go back to my page, Odessa Rose Creates by Robin Schmidt, and you can catch the replay on um, creating this guy. Also, I don't think I've gotten to show you. I did post it in my uh, page, but I didn't show you this here on a live. This I did over the weekend, a few days back, and it was uh, Dare. It's one, two transfers I used. Dare to Dream, I think is what it's called take a double look here yeah it's in the positive vibes collection called dare to dream it had two quotes on it dare to dream and make today yours so I use the make today yours and then it comes with the zebra print and then I used um, scene spots it's just another um, size B transfer for the spots and then before I did all the transferring I did uh, paint and age the back drop of these transfers. I'm gonna add a little bit of gold uh, wax by Deco Art in there just to give a little, a little bit of pizzazz. So that I did not do a live demonstration on. I was just creating Saturday afternoon and created this guy. So. Of course, all my projects, pretty much all my projects, unless I declare them for myself, are for sale. I'll either going to be taking them out to Valley, Nebraska, to the shop out there called The Attic, or I will place them in my Etsy shop, so if you're interested. Or you can just ask me here on Facebook if something's for sale, and I will get back to you. So let's see who is watching this morning. Do-do-do. I want you to say hello, Andy and Sarah. So it must be Sarah that's on. Hello, Sarah. All right, there we go. I'm gonna swipe over to the left. So say hello if you're watching. I would love to chat with you. This was the transfer we used yesterday. The um, Let Your Dreams Be Your Wings and it has the feathers in it. So I'm gonna set those aside. Today we're gonna work on the diagonal palette. This is a chalk couture surface great surface I use it a lot perfect for those solid uh, 18 by 24 inch transfers which I have a huge collection I love doing this for classes by the way if you're interested in um, having me teach you here in Omaha whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or a, a few friends that want to come um, I could do that right here in my studio so if you're interested in that, let me know. So I'm gonna take this out of the box. And so what's cool about this, this is actually considered the back side. And this side can be used as a treasure. You can see the framing goes up. So really you can paint out the frame or paint the middle a different color and it's uh, framed back drop of a diagonal palette and you can just put a hanger on it. Or you can create on this side and just use this edge as a hanger or attach a hanger. So it comes in this soft gray. You can see the wood grain in it. Um, I'm gonna paint it black 
And this is the transfer I'm going to use. I kind of wanted to see if it does fit inside here, which it does. This would be a cool one to make into a tray. I think we can get almost the whole transfer inside of the framing. And what you can do for making it a tray is just add to some handles like this, drill some holes in it, add the handles, and you can make it a tray. And you can put whatever transfer you want on it. So that's always a fun idea. I think I did this last year with the porch transfer. Um, this might be cute too. I'm trying to decide which, which way I want to go. Do I want to do it on the front or do I want to make it a tray? Um, yeah. Might be kind of cool. I'm, I'm visualizing. Visualizing. Let's try the tray. I don't think I've done a tray on live. So eventually I will paint the back side also, but today I'll just paint the front side so we can go on with finishing with the transfer. So I like to lay, um, lay them on four jars of paste so I can raise it up off the cardboard, okay? I'm just gonna, I'll just paint this part and then I'll paint the back later on. So I'm gonna use Fusion Mineral Paint. You can use whatever paint you have. I'm gonna paint it black and this almost hangs over my cardboard. I almost need a bigger piece of cardboard. But even though I'm painting this black, I am going to um, add a little bit of brown on top of it to give it a kind of a vintage vibe. Because obviously general stores are really from days past, <laughs> generally, except for on uh, the show Schitt's Creek <laughs> at a general store. Small towns, it's kind of like the old Dollar General. Uh, that's, you know, probably why they call it Dollar General because it's like a general store. So maybe they really aren't a thing of the past. I think they used to call, if you're from the Midwest, Casey's Gas Station uh, was called Casey's General Store. So I guess in reality, we still have general stores. They're just called convenience stores now. <laughs> Except for Dollar General. I'm not sure if Dollar Generals, are they pretty much United States wide? I'm, or if it's more of a Midwest thing, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's get this painted up. So what's everyone else doing today? Let me know. Are you gonna be uh, busy this weekend with plans? Friday night is Miss Vivian's birthday party. Uh, she's gonna be turning seven on the 25th. But Friday is her last day of school of first grade. And then they're gonna have a party at one of those jumping places where you can uh, jump on all the trampolines and all the foam pits and all that stuff to land in. Needless to say, I will not be doing any jumping. <laughs> Just observing. All right, let's get this puppy done. I feel like I'm in slow mode here. Sometimes I like to prep this ahead of time, but I was already time to come on on live, so I decided just to do it all live. And we can just sit and chat a minute while I paint. Luckily, this dries really quickly with the embossing gun, so it's not going to take long. Quicker to done the other side, we don't have all these grooves.
like I said, I will paint the underside um, later on. We don't have to do it today or while I'm on live. Okay, let's take a look at this side. Another reason to put it on cardboard is so you can turn it around easy without having to touch the paint. Dry this. Trying to get all the paint strokes smoothed out a bit. Hit the dryer. All right. What's the paint? This paint is, we can't really read it, Fusion, F U S I O N, Mineral Paint. You have to get it from a supplier, they're not really sold in the big stores. So like, whoa, I got a lot of glare on my face. <laughs> so um, the places that might repurpose furniture or things like that sell it. But if you go to their website, fusionmineralpaint.com, they have a store locator. And you can put in your zip code and find a, a dealer near you. And if you have no luck with that, um, the Attic in Valley, Nebraska, they have a Facebook page, The Attic, Valley, Nebraska. Um, she will ship it, but if you can save on shipping and find someone local, you know, that's always a good deal. It has a built-in primer and sealer in Fusion Mineral Paint, and it's a different paint. It's not like your latex where you get that stretchy latex. Um, and it's just super smooth, adheres to almost anything, it's just great. The first time I used it, I was painting my son's kitchen cupboards, and I used um, a deep gray color, like, I think it's called ash, I'm not sure, um, and it's holding up really, really well. And basically, I just washed the uh, cabinets with TSP, removed the doors, washed them. Um, I think I did a slight sanding on just the doors on the front. And then I sprayed it with a little bit of stain blocker and sanded that a bit to smooth it all out because it was sprayed on. And uh, that was just recommended in case any oils that might be trapped in that wood from being in the kitchen uh, would come through so it kind of blocked that out but we haven't had any problem and I didn't even uh, coat the paint with anything I just a couple of coats of paint and no sealer on top and it's held up really really well Get these cracks here. You all need to get some of that paint. I got some. It is life. It is life changing, right? On my white signs, I use the raw silk color. It's kind of a slightly off white, but not too off. And then this is called coal, coal black. Get it turned the right way whole black. You can see the color chart on their website. But a lot of people use it to repaint furniture when they um, repurpose furniture. No, oh, I missed a big piece. I'm going to color wash on some brown paint to maybe symbolize that it's kind of a rusty look or a dirty look. 
and if I do attach these handles, they're rusty brown. So I kind of want to bring in some brown into my sign. It'll kind of look like old wood that's been painted black, but the wood is coming through. Um, you know, instead of sanding it. All right. So I'm not quite sure if I'm done with my black, but I'm going to set it back here. And I grabbed a couple brown craft paints. One's more of a rusty color. It's called Burnt Sienna by Folk Art. This is an Anita uh, called Bark Brown. So just two different shades. One more rusty than the other. And uh, let's grab a craft brush. Get a thing of water. This way a little bit. Okay, so I'm wetting my brush. And, uh, I don't think I've done this technique on this side of the palette board. I'm just going to brush some of it on, kind of staining it almost. You can stain black paint, right? <laughs> I'm going to give it a whirl. Probably what I'm going to wish I had a bigger piece of cardboard underneath here. These craft paints work great for staining because it's just a thin, inexpensive paint. And you put a little water on them and just kind of giving a more of a woodsy, woody look, I guess you could say. I'm just going to kind of keep streaking it along until I get about where I want it. And then I might just dry it to set this color in. And then I'll work on the inside. So some areas seem a little bit more brown on it than others. I'm just going to just a smidge and just a dot more and you really don't want the color to be even you want it to look you know different in different areas Dry this, set this in. See how much of it shows up after we dry it. Hopefully, we can still see it. Always changes color a little bit, and of course, you lose that shine of the water. So, let's see what happens. This tray is the, the diagonal palette board by Chocotour. I'm, got, I'm getting a lot of glare. Um, yeah, it's the back side of the diagonal board. Um, so you can use the front side or the back side. I'm going to turn it over. This is what's considered the back side. And then you can add handles to it and create a tray. So it's pretty cool. I love the diagonal palette. It's we have so many uh, 18 by 24 transfers that um, it's hard to find other surfaces for them to fit on. And of course, this is the exact size, and those transfers work great on it. I love I love to work with that. It's probably my favorite surface of Chocolate Tour is the diagonal board. 
and it comes in a light gray and I almost always paint it and usually I'll do a layering technique kind of like this but usually I do uh, paint it brown and then I paint it white and sand it and age it up and you can kind of see the brown come through and even the gray if you sand enough. Yeah, I've done that on several, like the laundry and the farmhouse and um, a bunch of different ones. I've pretty much done the same technique. I just put different transfers on it. All right, so let's get this dried up. I'm just liking the brown on the frame. Um, kind of makes it look more like a frame. So I might just leave it there and not put in any in the middle. But I do think I'll add some of the second brown color. Uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, dimension and uh, depth to the finished frame. So I'm going to add a, an, a wet brush, some of the brown. The other brown, this is the coat, this is Bark Brown by Anita. But really, it doesn't matter. Just get two different shades of brown. And you'll be good to go. Just get your brush wet, smear it around. So yeah, I thought this time I would do black instead of a white background. dry this and call this done as far as this goes. You can tell, yeah, you can tell on the camera that it's uh, more black in the middle and more brown on the frame. And I will um, eventually paint the back side black. I like to have it finished on all sides. And we'll get this part dry. And then we'll um, put in our silk screen. I might do a little washing in the corners with brown. Just a little bit. Let's do that real quick. I'll probably just use the um, dark brown. I'm just going to put it some in the corners. Getting my brush wet. Okay. 
and then we're just going to press down a paper towel on top to pick up the moisture the water and just kind of maybe leave a stain hopefully Let's try it. Still got a lot of water in the cracks. I'm just picking it up. Right. You kind of see the. I I got so much. I changed my lighting today. Now I just got glare like crazy. Okay. There's the back side. So this is what the front side looked, and I will paint this black when we're done, so you don't have to watch that, and then I'll have to, you know, let it dry. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we have what looks kind of like an old chalkboard, really, almost. But um, I only did one coat of black on this, and you can kind of see my brush strokes. So I'm going to work with those by adding, uh, sanding it down just a little bit to make it look uh, a little bit more worn. And um, you know, the boards go diagonally, so I'm trying to decide whether to sand it diagonal also. I think I will. So you're going to get a little bit of that um, gray shining through. Just so you can recognize the the boards make them look, look a little aged. Just gonna possibly pick up the chalk dust with this paper towel here, or the paint dust. Okay, I'm gonna just run my brown water over it just to see if it tones it down a little bit. May not do anything. It's just a bit streaked. Just gonna stain Hopefully we're just going to stain the white streaks, which is actually gray. I'm just going to brush this on and then rub it off. And hopefully it just attached to the uh, whiteness a little bit.
a little bit. Okay. Kind of picky about my backgrounds. <laughs> That's what makes them stand out. I mean, if you have a different background or negative space, is different than just painted one color. Um, it's going to make it more unique. So we're going to put a little wax on top of this before we put our transfer on. Okay, so there it is. Right? So it looks pretty worn, right? The only thing I probably will do also, once I take this out to my garage and I'm gonna drill in my holes for my handles, I might take my electric sander and just sand the edges just to make them not so sharp and just kind of soften the edges up a little bit in the corners, um, which I can do, I can hand sand that too, which I might just do that. Um, but okay, let's put a little bit, uh, we're gonna do the um, special dark Minwax finishing paste, right? And it just has, it's stained. So it's going to age it even more a little bit. So it's just dark. There's other stained waxes out there you can use. Definitely do not have to use these. I think I'm done painting, so I'm going to remove my jars here. And even my cardboard. The waxing is a, a few different reasons. One, it protects your paint. So if you have a really sticky transfer and it could pull up paint. So this helps your transfer not stick so hard or so well to your paint. It does not like to stick to the wax as much. And if you would have a bleed through on your print, um, having it, that chalk paste on the wax allows you to clean that up easier than if it got absorbed into the paint. Because it can be hard to pick out the, pick up the chalk paste pigment off of paint once it stains it. So this kind of protects your paint from being stained from the chalk paste if it does, if it lands where you don't want it. And you can even, you know, wax your frame if you want. It doesn't really, it just kind of, really, it kind of finishes it off, smooths it all out. But I'll probably wax, if I'm going to sand it, I'll probably wax it over that again. So I'm just going to just briefly show that part. Okay. So we have that. And we are going to grab our transfer finally the general store it's open daily home goods and groceries and we're going to place that in the middle and whether i make this a tray or make it a sign either way it's going to be cute so this is our size c transfers they're 18 by 24 and you can see how they fit perfectly i mean perfectly on the front side right but if it's small enough you might be able to get it into the middle of your tray and we're going to try to work it in the middle of this part i say tray but it can be it can still be a um it's just barely fits from the top to the bottom but we're going to try it so, brand new, I'm going to have to fuzz this guy. Lay that down. I think I'll set this here. And take my fuzzing cloths. 
I'm gonna just lay that down here a couple times. Sometimes you can lay your cloth first and then put your transfer on top, it doesn't matter. Putting fuzz on the back of your sticky transfer also helps it release off of your board easier. Because if you are pulling really hard on your transfer, you could be stretching that silk screen in there. So all those parts that are not the teal, that's the silk screen fabric, and it is stretching. See how it stretches on the diagonal, on the bias? So if you would stretch it out, you may not have a very flat transfer again. It may not lay flat again. Uh, so that's another reason also not to pull the corners when you're pulling because you're pulling on the bias and stretching it. You want to pull evenly across from top to bottom or side to side so you're not stretching that bias and stretching out your fabric. Okay, so. Okay. I'm going to lay this in here. Trying to get it centered. It doesn't quite fit perfectly. It hangs a little bit on the frame on the bottom here. I'm gonna have to blow my nose, people. All right. So get your air pockets out. If you see one in there, you just lift this up and smooth it back out. Okay, before we start chalking, I'm gonna make sure we don't have any questions. I love that transfer. All right, good morning, Darla. You like my hair today? Thanks, I, of course, I washed it today and uh, you know, we're trying to grow this art. I mean, if I don't have a clippy in it, it ends up like this in my face <laughs> when I'm working. So I put a little clippy just to hold it till that gets long enough that it will hopefully stay back, but. That's her plan, my stylist plan. We'll see if it happens. Okay, I'm gonna grab some bright white and my dune. I'm gonna swirl in both colors. That way it's not like stark, stark white, but parts of it are gonna be brighter than other parts because we're gonna use white and dune, both. And mix them together as we go. We got our dune, we got our white, we are ready to go here. And I'm gonna just put some different areas of it on here. And then we're gonna do what I call S Sing <laughs> I use S's snaking down the transfer and spreading this chalk paste. So I'm gonna take actually just a small squeegee and I'm gonna just start going like this. And I'll kind of swirl in those two colors. I'm gonna come back here and grab the corners. Let's see if we have enough paste on here. We can always add more. This transfer has the built-in, um, you know, vintage look to it. So that's why we definitely want to make this vintage. And right where it uh, wants to stop here, going up on the side, I'm gonna to try to just keep it on the board. I definitely think I'm gonna need a little bit more paste. There we 
we go. Trying to get that right along there. All right, scrape up our extra. Peel this up. Lay this on the backer sheet. Okay, we'll clean that in the sink. So there. That looks pretty cool. I don't know if I want to make it a tray or if I just want to make it a sign. I'll decide. But it looks pretty good. Um, there are some more whiter areas and then there are more creamier areas, which kind of gives it that aged look, right? So it looks pretty cool. Looks look looks like an old general store sign. I might have to, you know, sand the edges a little bit to make it a little bit more worn. Just a little bit. I'm not going to do too much of it. But we want to dry this first before I apply any sandpaper to it. it turned out really good. I'm hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> I think I'm having a hot flash. I'm glad I don't have a jacket on right now. I am hot. <laughs> Let's just dry this paste real quick. should be dry. I'm going to continue cleaning off my squeegee here. I dropped that like a hot potato because <laughs> I knew my face was starting to dry in my screen and I wanted to have a good print so you gotta hurry sometimes. I'm just about this white is just about all gone but I have a new dreamy creamy one I probably will go ahead and mix this in with the new it's just about gone well maybe not there's a little bit more in here than I thought sometimes I do I probably will okay chalk paste fingers Paint. One thing about that Fusion Mineral paint, it's hard to get off your skin. I mean, like, once it really dries. These are probably the best thing to get it off is a Clorox or Lysol wipe. But that's how goes, that goes to show you how good of a paint it is. Even though it's water-based, it's it adheres really well, including your skin. Majority of it's off anyway. All right, guys. 
usually take a little sandpaper to the corners. I kind of like it sharp and crisp too. I don't know, kind of liking it like that without sanding these down. It's a new old general store sign. Now I will sand them a little bit, just a little bit. Just in some areas. And this, I think the black was not dried enough. And then when I put on the watery brown, Kind of just picked up the black a little bit. Why that did that? Because I wasn't patient enough to dry it all really well. Imagine that. Okay, just some light curving of the corners here. So, I don't know, I might put the handles on. They'll look like this. It might look kind of cool. So, I'll go out to the shed and do that. And, um, hey, thanks for talking with me today. And while I'm sweating, <laughs> my, my uh, chalk, chalking is my workout. Yeah, because I'm just sweating like crazy. The last one I did got all globby and clogged up on the screen. Right? The last one I did got all globby and clogged up. This, what did you... How did that happen, Regina? You did something wrong. Um, I'm going to guess your chalk paste was too thick, too dry. That's, or you let it on there too long before you picked up your print and instead of your chalk paste sticking to your surface, it stuck into your silk screen because you allowed it to dry in your silk screen. So I'm guessing that is why. So you want your chalk paste to be, well, now we have our new chalk paste formula and it's gonna be almost perfect all the time. It's that creamy, dreamy formula that we have now and it's like perfect. Um, but the older paste, you do have to add water to them and you want that soft yogurt consistency or even like sour cream, maybe even slightly thinner than a, than a sour cream, but like a really soft yogurt. So if it's thicker than that, be sure to add water, uh, spritz in some water in your jar and mix that water in to um, soften up your chalk paste. You don't want it thick. All right, any other questions? And that's why sometimes, especially with the old paste, we what we do is called a paste and peel. Like I could have like pasted half of this and then picked up the transfer if I thought it was going to be a while before I got the second part done. So when you pick that up, that releases that chalk paste out of your silk screen and allows it to stick to your surface. Because um, you don't want, like I just said, you don't want that paste drying in your silk screen and um, not sticking to your board. So don't let it dry in your silk screen. Just pick it up. Even if you're halfway done, you could pick up your transfer and then gently lay it back down on top of your wet, wet paste and then that paste will stay on your, transfer, on your uh, surface and not in your transfer. Now, if you get paste stuck in your silk screen, go take it your transfer to the water and let that water hydrate that paste back out so it loosens it up and then you can um, um, wash it out also use one of our board erasers on it let me grab I call them board erasers but really it should just be called chalk eraser so you get these two soft um, little foamy things and you want to wet it and then while your transfer is under the water it's um, not that you want to soak your transfer in water for very long but get just keep getting it wet and keep 
even right away you can just use your hands and so get that um, chalk paste softened up so it'll come out of your silk screen and then you can take one of these wet ones while your water's running and gently start rubbing off the chalk paste and that will get it off um, you may have to flip it over to the back side and rub that down a little bit too with the water and this in the um, board eraser and you know get it all get all the chalk paste off and it should come back you should be able to use your silk screen again as long as you get that paste off of it so okay all right guys did you say you use raw silk for your white yes i do carla i use fusion mineral paint raw silk and it's slightly off you can see the the lid is white right and then that's the color of the paint. It's just a slight off white. But there is a more of a white. I think it's called Picket Fence if you want more white versus that color. But I, I just like the raw silk. Okay. It's kind of between dune color and white. It's kind of in between those two colors. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So yeah, I, I think I'll um, drill that hole in. I may wait till my husband comes home. I hate to say I kind of need his help, but I might. He's better at getting the right sizes of the holes than me. And you might need to countersink, countersink it so the heads are flush with the back. Speaking of the back, I'm gonna paint this black. Even though I did, I didn't get too much paint on the back side. That's pretty good, but I'll probably go ahead and paint it. So thanks, to, thanks for talking with me today. And uh, today's Thursday. I don't think I have any plans for tomorrow, so I may be back on. That would be five days in a row. I don't think I've ever done five days in a row of lives, but I just might tomorrow. We'll talk with you later. Bye.